First Timothy 2 1 says, first of all, then I urge that all prayers, supplications, thanksgiving, and intercessions be made for all men. This is a program envisioned to encourage everyone to pray for our nation, in particular, the eight pillars of society. And today we have with us the lead pastor of Calvary Baptist Church from Grand Rivers, Kentucky. He started preaching at age 14 and has been pastoring a church for nine years. We have with us Pastor Nick Forsyth. Yeah, happy to be here. It's our pleasure. Today we'll be focusing on social media as one of the pillars. So can you please lead us in our devotion and our study of God's Word in relation to social media? Yeah, I would love to. In uh, Exodus chapter 4, um, it says, Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe or listen to my voice, and they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. And the Lord said to him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it and it became a staff in his hand. You know, we saw there back in Exodus where God commanded Moses to throw down his staff and it became a serpent. And he asked him the simple question, what's in your hand? And if you go anywhere out in our culture, it doesn't matter if it's in the West, in the United States, or here in the Filipino culture, you see that everybody has a phone in their hand. And just like the magicians back in the day during the Egypt used their wickedness to cause snakes to happen, God had his own snake, and God ate those snakes up. And I believe social media nowadays can be used as a powerful platform for the gospel. I believe that you know the gospel is never changing, but the way of getting the gospel to the culture is always changing. And with so much negativity on our social media outlets, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, any type of outlet you can imagine, there's so much negativity out there. I think it's the Christian's, Christian's job to provoke positivity and to put God back in the spotlight and reminding people that there's hope, uh, there's love, there's encouragement, there's a different way. And uh, I think you know, using social media and that platform, using what's in our hands, is a powerful way. David slew Goliath with what, with, with what he had in his hand. And I believe we can really change the course of our generations by using what's in our hands. And that's our phones, using social media. Thank you very much, Pastor, for that. Very insightful, yeah. devotional. We also have with us a millennial guest. She's a student of uh, communication arts from the University of Santo Tomas. And she also does covers on YouTube. We have with us Miss Debbie Tika. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. So, social media. How exactly would you define social media as opposed to the traditional media that we have for so long um, been acquainted with? Mm. Social media, um, like as a communication arts student, I studied about social media and the difference of social media now from media from the past. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, social media for me is a platform where um, people get to speak up about their beliefs and or entertainment but social media is like very very important because that's i th i think that that's the best way to you know share the gospel or share um share you know positivity because that's really what everyone else is using right now and instead of seeing negative things on the media you could also like you know spread that good type of energy and i think um i like that like i'm so blessed to um be in this part of gen um this generation because like i have a youtube channel and i um you know i post stuff there covers and you know vlogs and stuff and it's really really fun and everyone loves stuff like that and imagine if I just, you know, share the good news through that platform. And everyone can do it, really. Like, comparing it to Jesus' disciples, like, he had just 12 disciples. And they weren't that, you know, they weren't, you know, famous or they weren't rich. They were just simple people. But he chose them to, you know, share the good news and the gospel. And I think that... Um, anyone could really just share the gospel through social media. It could be anyone. 
Um, I would say the big difference in social media is that everybody has a perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, usually traditional news, there's just that, you know, network's perspective. That's true. And uh, that's the only perspective you get. And if you want a different perspective, you have to go to another news channel. With mm -hmm. social media, the big thing that's really been a revelation for our, our generations, for millennials, is that it doesn't matter what your opinion is, you have a voice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, you've got an opinion and you can stick it out there and on the forefront of issues. And um, especially in the culture we live in, you can become famous overnight mm -hmm. by either videotaping something or taking a picture. It can blow up and go viral just as easy as a mouse click or a, or a phone tap, I should say. Just as easy as clicking a button on a smartphone. It can happen like that. So social media, I believe, really changes the aspect because everybody has a perspective. Everybody has a view. And now everybody has a voice. Mm -hmm. That's true. It used to be that media, we use media primarily for information mm -hmm. and entertainment. Has that changed with the entry of social media? No. Um, it's still like that, information and entertainment. But I think something that, you know, um, something that, you know, what's it called? Something that added, mm -hmm. that got added into that is like, just really neg negativity, how the world, like the worldliness of social media. I mean, social media is really positive. It could be a positive thing, but it could also be really, really dark and negative. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. hate, cyberbullying, body shaming, stuff like that. And um, that's, that's like, what's happening right now and awareness information awareness entertainment awareness of like you know racism it's it's just really broad and mm -hmm. how how has social media or how does social media impact the lives of especially millennials because a recent hootsuite survey says that filipinos spend as much as nine hours a day on the internet and uh, four hours in particular for the millennials age school age four hours on social media. So has this changed the way you perceive things and how you, you relate with society in general? Well, my phone is really a big influence in my everyday life because everything on my phone, I mean, everything is on my phone. Mm -hmm. Like my schedule, my contacts, my, you know, where I'm going, everything. And it, it's a really big help, but um, you know, sometimes you get carried away and just stay on your phone forever and not socialize. It's ironic because it's social media, but you're just on your phone when you're with your friends. It's not really socializing physically, but social media and, you know, just the phone, which is shallow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's supposed to open the world to yeah. you, right? But it can also be alienating, yes. right? Yeah. Even in families, when uh, everybody has their phones on the table, and they would be conversing with people from all over, but not with each other. And that ha somehow weakens the very fabric of, of the family. How, how has this uh, affected our young people today, especially uh, those that still go to church? Um, I'd say that um, you know, when it comes to the church, and we've tried to adapt with social media, we've tried to integrate it into, into who we are, but at the base of Christianity is community. Mm -hmm. That's what the early church was built around. That's what the early church was built around, coming around a table, hospitality, sharing a meal together. If you follow Jesus' accounts in all the Gospels, whenever he has a conversation, there's always food there. That's right. And I love Jesus because of that. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, there's always food there. There's yes. always food, and there's always great conversation, and there's always communication. Mm -hmm. And that starts with community. And, you know, we live in a day and age where people, they can watch church, but not be a part of the church. Mm -hmm and they still think that's church. And you don't see that in the New Testament. You don't see that in the Bible. You have to have communication. You have to have human interaction. We need it at the very fabric of our souls. We cry out for community. The man goes to the bar because he's looking for a community. Mm -hmm. The man goes to the sporting event because he's looking for a community. The mom goes and does all these things because she's looking for a community. And they're looking for the church. They don't know it, but it's ingrained in us. We're looking to belong. We're looking to be a part of something. And when you're bonding on a, to a, when you're looking at church through a screen, you're not bonding with people. That's right. You're bonding with the screen. Mm -hmm. And the problem is with that screen is that screen isn't a person. And so you're not really taking part in it. And I really love what she said there at the end of that. She said, you know, that you can become so used to social media that you forget to be social. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what many millennials are facing when they go to the job force or when they go to the workforce or anything else. They're really facing that 
they lack communication skills. Mm -hmm. They're very tech savvy. They can write an email faster than anybody can. They can type, you know, 150 words a minute. They can really go through it. I'm a, I'm a pecker, by the way. Uh, you know, they can really, really get with it. But when it comes time to sit down and have a meeting, mm -hmm. to shake a hand, to strike a deal, to have a conversation with an individual who's really in front of them, mm -hmm. a lot of millennials struggle. And uh, I would say that getting, making sure that the dinner table is still the place where you put the phones away. Mm -hmm. And you lay them aside, and you know we have. I've played a game with my friends before. We put all of our phones in a basket, and uh, we go to a restaurant, and we say whoever gets their phone out the fa the first time has to pay for lunch. Right. And it's a long lunch with a lot of good conversation, because <laughs> okay. nobody wants to grab their phone. <laughs> but we live in a day and age where we need to unwind and disconnect to re to be really truly connected with each other, because we need that for our souls. We need that for our being. We need that in our families. But this happens even in church. People refer to their iPads and their smartphones for the Bible text instead mm -hmm. of using actual Bibles. Is that good or bad? I would say it's good and bad in some ways. I mean, it's good. I use an iPad every now and then. It's good because let's say I go to a church with a different translation. I mm -hmm. just pull right up. But I tell you what's crazy. This thing's never died. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I've never had, like I don't have to worry about it running out. It's mm -hmm. a very hard copy. I can take it anywhere. And I'm kind of an old soul millennial. You know, mm -hmm. I'm 27 and I like the feel of it, but I know exactly where the verse is at on the page. Yes. I know exactly where my note's at on the page. And you know, and there might be times I might forget it somewhere, but I also know when there's a coffee stain, I remember that night. I'm like, man, that was that night. Me and Jesus were up in Acts chapter 4 at 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, that's a vivid memory. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with the church, I encourage people to bring a hardback copy. Mm -hmm. And I encourage them to get, get in their Bibles because I want you to know I'm telling you the truth. I want you to read it with your own eyes, feel it with your own heart, and really see it with your own soul. I want you to do that. And uh, sometimes when you bring a phone in, it can be distracting because you can be on your Bible app tap a button and you can open up Instagram. That's right. You can open up Facebook. You don't even know if they're actually reading the Bible text or yeah. social media. There's an old joke that someone once said, I used to love hearing the Bible pages open. Now I just look for that heavenly glow on their face. <laughs> whenever, they, whenever they turn on their phone, it lights up their face. Um, but we don't really know. So having a hardback copy, in my opinion, I think it really, really shows that, hey, I'm serious and I'm going to listen. And I'm going to be intentional about my time with Jesus in this church. That's right. Debbie mentioned earlier about the dark side of social media and the web. Can we discuss for a little about that? What exactly are the dangers of social media? Well, first of all, it's depressing because that's in, on Twitter, especially Twitter. That's where people rant, love mm -hmm. to rant, mm -hmm. and they share, you know, in Twitter, I usually see a lot of Nazis and, you know, racism, hate towards the politics, just hate everywhere, um, what's it called, um, global warming. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really bad, but like, you know, people just, it's like they start Twitter wars, that, that's the thing. Twitter <laughs> yeah, wars, tweet wars. Um, there's all, you know, the Facebook comments, mm -hmm. when, when you post something controversial, for example, you post something about your opinion about, you know, Donald Trump. People will comment on that and you, you'll just start a big argument online in front of hundreds of people or thousands who can see that. You can even like little kids, these little kids like three years old, they have their own iPads already. That's true. And I'm, I'm gener Generation Z. He's a millennial, I'm Generation <laughs> Z because that's like younger now. <laughs> Um, when I was growing up, my first, the first time I had my phone was when I was 12, like that. But now they're all like three years old, they have their iPad already, they have two phones, you know, stuff like that. And it's, it's dangerous and crazy how these little kids are on their iPads already and they have, like imagine they can easily access. I would say, uh, piggybacking off of that, I think a huge big game that social media plays in all of us is comparison. Mm -hmm. because you know you see people put out these filtered photos and we even have mm -hmm. a hashtag that's no filter which okay. means we haven't touched it up touched we haven't done okay. anything it's all natural and we put that out there and we're almost showing people that I'm I've got my life together mm -hmm. that every one of my grandkids is doing good all of my children went to college like it, my life is perfect when that's really not reality when there's nobody's life who's perfect we're mm -hmm. all just broken sinners saved by grace and God uses every single day 
And the crazy thing is though, is I'll get on there even through late hours of the night and you're looking and you're like, man, I wish I was like that person. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I had this, man, I wish I had that. And that's what social media does. It brings all the things you used to see in stores front windows, it brings it to your screen in mm -hmm. your house. Maybe even in all kinds of other areas of your life, you can compare what you have compared to somebody else has. And that's a, that's a lie from the enemy. You know, the Bible says we are all fearfully and wonderfully made, which means, you know, when God made me, when God made her, when God made you, he broke the mold. Mm -hmm. There's not another individual like you, but society is screaming, you know, you have to have this to be happy. When Jesus and the church should be screaming, Jesus is screaming, but the church should be screaming, you are wonderfully made. That you should find your joy in Jesus, not find your joy in the things of God, but in God himself. And uh, I really think that the, one of the biggest, darkest issues with social media is that there's so much negativity mm -hmm. and it's so easy to stir controversy up. But the comparison game, I think, is a very, very sly thing that's in the back of our minds where we want to make ourselves look good. Like, you don't see anybody rolling up out of bed, mm -hmm. no hair done, no makeup on. Woke up like this. Yeah, woke <laughs> up like this, taking a picture, looking like... Nobody does that because mm -hmm. they don't want people to think that they're human. Mm -hmm. And we're all human. We all have flaws. We all have things we don't like about ourselves. Everybody, nobody's perfect. Nobody's That's perfect. True. But social media, as we mentioned, it can be very powerful. It can be a power, powerful tool for evangelism mm -hmm. and for, again, information and education of people. How then do we redeem social media as a pillar of influence so that it can be used for God's glory? Okay. Um, whenever the garden, whenever we were in the garden, you know, God gave us beautiful things and sin always takes something that was beautiful and twist it mm -hmm. and that social media I believe can be a beautiful thing but so many times the world gets its hands on it or the devil gets his hands on it, they twist it mm -hmm. and so I think you know there's a lot of Millennials as well as her generation a lot of younger people saying I'm just not gonna do any social media and I don't think that's the solution to the problem I think by us being positive you can only drive out you know hate with love Martin Luther King jr. said that that's the only way you can drive out hate is with love and I firmly believe that the only way we're going to win out with social media is by flushing it with great social media, mm -hmm. with holy, ho holy social media, really being a positive impact on our communities and using it for the gospel because the world is at our fingertips. You know, it doesn't matter if we're here in the Philippines while in the States, they're on 13 hour time difference mm -hmm. where I can be going on my feed and I can see her dad posting a live video mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can watch it because he's halfway around the world. I can watch it in my own house. And mm -hmm. so that's a beautiful thing. We can keep communication. And more than that though, a big, big thing I think social media brings to the table is you can share the gospel. Mm -hmm. You can share it anywhere and however you want to share it. And you know, Jesus told us, he said, go therefore into the world. And a part of social media, part of the world is social media. And you can get on there and you can send out all kinds of stuff and you never know who's going to see your candle in the darkness. Mm -hmm. You never know who's going to see your post and maybe you didn't think it meant much to you, but to somebody out there, it meant the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of people who come up to us and say, man, you posted that sermon, or you shared that YouTube video, or you wrote that blog, or you posted that picture with a hashtag, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made, or Proverbs 31 woman, you know what I mean? You, and they see that, and it makes them beg to say, who's this Jesus figure? Who is God? I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. And I'm sure there'll be people who come up to heaven we've never met, we've never seen, who don't speak our language, who look nothing like the us but they saw a social media thing that we helped be a part of, and it sparked the movement of God. Great. Can you give this as an example of how you would introduce Jesus to somebody on social media? Oh, me? Um, well, yeah, uh, everyone knows, like, okay, for example, on Instagram or Twitter, your followers are people you know or people who know you, and people know me as a pastor's kid. And um, on YouTube or Facebook, I post like Christian songs, I post verses. I mean, that's how, um, you know, I share personally, like God's love and, you know, positivity to people. I also refrain from, you know, posting really, really, you know, negative stuff. I never try to do that. It's really bad. So that's how I kind of share the gospel through. Can you give us some tips on how the churches can use social media to their advantage? I would say live streaming is a good first step. Okay. Like when you have service, make sure you're live streaming. Uh, but with live streaming comes some, come some guards. You have to really make sure <laughs> nothing crazy happens. It's kind of, you know, puts you on the edge of your seat because mm -hmm. it's live. Anything can happen when it's live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's the first thing I'd say, go live stream. And then having a very strong 
social media campaign mm -hmm. where you have a church page set up and you're posting things on there, encouraging things, mm -hmm. and you really encourage your people, you know, don't buy into the negativity. Don't buy into, you know, attacking your brother and sister. Lift them up. You know, it says to build up one another and encourage one another. So do that. If you see somebody and you're like, man, they look really, really happy. Comment and say, man, you look really joyful. You look really happy. Mm -hmm. And so positivity, just flooding them with the grace spread of the God. Love. Yeah, spread the love. You know, give, give kindness away like it's confetti. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like just, just give it away. Give love away. And just make sure people really feel the love of Christ. And in our church, we've really been pushing a campaign called You Can Belong Before You Believe. And we really push that, that you can belong, you can be a part of us before you believe. Because when you, when you get around people and you, you really, you see that they love you for no reason, mm -hmm. that they just love you because Jesus loves them, you start to ask, what is the difference? Why do you love me? Like, I'm broken, I'm a mess. Like, maybe you were an alcoholic or maybe you were doing some other sinful things. And you're like, why would you love me? And they say, because Jesus loves me. And, you know, bring, bringing the message to the forefront of social media, saying this is what we represent. We haven't got it all together, but together we have it all because we have Jesus. And really showing people that we can do Facebook live stream with our church. We can post pictures, encouraging messages. We can comment and really promote things. And more than anything, we can get the word out. We can get events out there like, hey, we're feeding in the slums. Come be a part of this. Hey, we're going to give away Thanksgiving baskets is what we do in the, well, mm -hmm. we do in the States. We're going to do these things. And getting people involved, it really is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a widespread. It's sowing seeds. It's casting seeds. And so I would just say using your church's page and even your own page, be a social media missionary. Mm -hmm. That's right. Be a social media missionary and really say, you know what, I'm going to leverage my social media I could use it for my glory, or I could use it for Jesus' glory. Mm. I could use it to build my little kingdom that's not going to stand, or I can spend my time building God's kingdom, which is always going to stand. And so taking that ambition, that, that, that vigor you have about yourself, and saying it's not about me, it's about the kingdom of God, and leveraging all of you have, even your posts from your photos to your sayings to everything, to be about the mission of Christ mm -hmm. is what I, how I use mine and how I think our church does. That's great. So it, social media really can be a very powerful tool for evangelism and to help us really propagate the knowledge and love for God. But there are a lot of challenges. So right now, may I ask you to lead us in prayer for the social media situation, not only in the Philippines, but all over the world, and the social media users in particular are millennials. Man, I'll pray for us. Jesus, we come to you uh, this afternoon, God, and we are so grateful that we have the tools to reach the world now. Yes. God, we have tools that can, with a click of a finger or a click of a mouse, or God, we can touch thousands of souls all at once. But more than anything, God, I ask that you guard our fingers, you guard our eyes, and more than that, dear God, you guard our souls. Dear God, you guard our souls from not buying into the comparison game, not buying into negativity, that we would try to spread your love, your grace, your mercy, and spread your gospel, God and build your kingdom, knowing that it's not our kingdom and our plan and our will be done, but it's your kingdom come, your will be done. Dear God, we ask that you give us, give us power and give us boldness. Give us boldness to confront those issues like sex trafficking. Give us boldness, dear God, to confront those issues like adoption, dear God, to put those issues at the forefront of social media and let people know that these things are not right, dear God, and that we can lead the way with justice. Dear God, I'm asking, dear God, you guard our keystrokes, you guard our hearts, you guard our ears, you guard our eyes. And you make us social media missionaries. Dear God, that we can, we can slide into people's DMs with the gospel. That we can click and be the hands and feet of Jesus, even on the web, dear God, knowing that you work all things to good for those who love you. Dear God, we ask that you do a, a revival, dear God, even in our own generations, that we would see hope and love spread across the web, dear God. And that maybe we would be just a small spark that starts the fire. We ask that it spread. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor Nick Thank and you. Debbie, for sharing these thoughts with us. It's really an interesting discussion yeah. that we had today. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyong lahat na sumama sa amin sa ating pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos at pag-aaral tungkol sa lakas, sa kabutihan at pwedeng maging masamang epekto ng social media. At ang aming pong pamanhik, maging kasama rin namin kayo sa pananalangin para sa ating bansa, sa ating pamilya at sa social media, lalo na nga sa ating mga anak na siyang na-expose dito. 
Maraming pong salamat sa inyong pagsama sa amin. Lagi nga po tayong manalangin para sa ating bansa. Ito po ang programang A Nation in Prayer and I'm your host, Hazel Salaryosa Alves.